before you start, Jeremy. Um, I already hit the button. All right, well, I'll ask my question anyway. When we rename ourselves, we have to do that all the time? I don't think you need to. Uh, Maria, Natasha, and myself should. Uh, but um, I think uh, this committee meetings, I don't think you need to. All right. For, awesome. for the full board meeting, I think it'll be a good idea. Okay. I see Zach's here. I see Emily's here. Hello, Emily. Uh, hey, how are you? How are you? Oh, hey, guys. There you go. Can you see me? Yep, we can see you. I'm in my, I'm in my car. Apologize. I hope you're not driving. Nope, I'm parked in the parking lot. Just took a little break from work. I may have to run back, but hopefully you have me. Jeremy, maybe make Julio a co-host in case we have any technical issues. Let me ask Julio before we do it. I'm not staying for the full meeting, just for a good 20 minutes. So okay. there's our answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's a small group, so hopefully there shouldn't be any major issues. We had uh, 50 members of the public or so uh, RSVP, so it's not going to be so small tonight. Well, I'll keep your fingers crossed. People be patient. <laughs> are, we on, are we the only thing on the agenda tonight, Jeremy? Only thing. Okay. Cool. And you guys have one, one presentation you're going to make about 7th and 8th Avenue, is that correct? Yes. Um, Lily. Uh, no, 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 Zach, this is uh, 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 City Bike. City Bike. The city bike. Sorry. Um, Lily and Lisa are on um, also. They'll be, they're from the bike share unit. Right. This is all about City Bike. Okay. Is it just the three of you tonight, Emily, or anybody else joining us? Um, so, Dash, who is new to the commissioner's office, he is also on the call right now. And okay. That's just the four of us so far. All right, great. We have 31 participants. Yeah, 16 attendees so far. And 16 panelists. All right, let's, let's wait a couple more minutes and we'll get it started. Let people, um, give, them, give them like three more minutes, we'll start. Okay. So let me just say to members of the public who are listed as attendees tonight, not panelists, um, you can raise your hand, uh, but we would have to unmute you in order for you to talk. Uh, please wait until after the presentation to raise your hand, uh, and we will call on you uh, at the proper time. Uh, board members will have the first opportunity, though, but however, you will all have the opportunity to speak. Maria, would you just check emails one last time, see if anything's come in? Sure. Thank you. Let me check your phone. I got it, Natasha. Zach, whenever you're ready, tell me to call roll first. <clears throat> okay, let's get to the starting. Please, uh, everybody, welcome to the meeting, Transportation Committee meeting, uh, December 7th. Uh, we have a presentation by the Trans Department of Transportation about city bike expansion into our district. Uh, Jeremy, you want to start the meeting by calling roll? Thank you. Yep. I'm going to mute everybody right now. Board members, when I call your name, uh, please unmute yourself. 
uh, recognize that you've been called and then mute yourself again. Um, if you are a board member who is not a member of this committee, I am not going to call your name, but I will acknowledge that you're here. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We no longer have a chat function, so I'm gonna call your name. Okay, so we'll start with uh, the committee. So, Zachary, JC. I'm here. Thank you. John Garcia. Joan Body. Here. Folks, please don't unmute yourself until it's your time. John Canale. Uh, Joseph Canale, I'm sorry. Uh, here. David Estrada. Here. Marilyn Melman. Gloria Rodriguez Navoa. Cindy Vandenbosch. Katie Walsh. John DeLuper. Right here. Cesar Zuniga. Okay, I'm gonna call off board members' names as I see you to let you know I have your attendance. So I have Beverly Kleiman, Karen Rolnick, Pat Ruiz. Here. Uh, Nick Azadian, Julio Pena, Stacy Boyd, and I believe I have everybody now. Nope, wait, did I, call, I didn't call John Johnston, John Johnston. And Victor Swinton, sorry. Let me just make sure. Okay. All yours, Zach. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, we, Emily, would you like to uh, introduce our presenters uh, for the DOT? Yeah. Um, so my name is Emily. I'm the community liaison for CB7. Um, with me, I brought Lily Gordon Coven and Lisa Morasco, who are planners in the bike share unit. And um, I believe Lisa will be taking, will be presenting tonight. So. Lisa? Lisa, are you, uh, are you going to be uh, showing your screen? Yes. yes. That would be okay, so I'm going to make you co-host then. Thank you. Great, and everyone can see that? Great. Just make this full screen. Um, so thanks again um, to Emily um, and Community Board 7 for uh, having us this evening. Uh, my name is Lisa Morosco. I'm a senior planner on the bike share team. Um, and I'm here to present uh, the draft plan presentation for City Bike Expansion and Community Board 7. Um, I also just wanted to note that there's going to be a handful of sites in Community Boards 10, 12, and 14 as well. Um, I'll start with the basics of bike share, um, a little bit about our outreach process, and then run through the draft plan itself. Um, so what is bike share? Um, it's a sustainable mode of transportation, uh, really made up of a dense network of publicly shared bikes um, and helps increase mobility around neighborhoods, giving people just an additional mode of transportation, as well as connecting to other modes, um, such as bus, ferry, subway, acting as a complement to the existing infrastructure. Um, systems operate 24 seven, making them really convenient um, and reliable as well. Um, so City Bike is New York City's bike share system. It is a public private partnership. Um, it's the largest and most highly utilized in the nation. Um, so DOT is um, the public side of the partnership, really responsible for planning and outreach. And then Lyft really does the day-to-day -day operations. Um, no city funds are used um, for the operation of the system. Um, it's a station-based uh, system, so it can be um, on the sidewalk or in the roadway. So it's dedicated space on these areas um, where users can access bikes. Um, they're modular, solar powered, um, and there's no hardwiring into the ground. They take about a couple of hours to install. 
Um, so City Bike has been around for about seven years, launched in May 2013 with 330 stations, 6,000 bikes, and you can see that in the lighter gray areas here. Um, in 2015, phase two expansion, doubling the size of the system. So you can see um, in this uh, more royal blue um, with 750 stations, 12,000 bikes. Um, and then 20, in 2019, we started phase three expansion, which will again um, double the size of the area and expand for the first time into the Bronx. Um, we hope to be completed by 2014, um, 2024, <laughs> sorry. Um, there's gonna be an additional um, 35 square miles and 16,000 bikes um, at the end of phase three expansion. Um, so a little bit about ridership. Um, it's been tremendously successful. We've seen over 111 million trips. Um, on average, you know, in peak riding months, so warmer riding months, we see about 70,000 daily trips, 90,000 plus on, you know, our busiest days and a, about 170,000 annual members. So we're see this is something that New Yorkers use um, and, and that they want. So just a, a few things about pricing. There's a couple of primary um, membership options, casual and annual. So for the casual, there are three primary ways. You have the single ride day or three day pass. Um, so for the day and the three day pass, it's 30 minutes unlimited rides for those durations. Um, so 24 hours, you can have as many 30 minute trips as you want. Um, in an annual membership, you can have as many trips as you want um, for 45 minutes um, for about a year. Um, two um, special memberships are our reduced fare bike share, um, which is for NYCHA residents and SNAP recipients. It's $5 a month, no annual commitments and then our credit development credit union um, memberships, and those are $5 a month with an annual commitment. And again, same, same um, model with 45 unlimited rides. There we go. Um, so just a little bit about our equity efforts. Um, there's a variety of programs that are really aimed at expanding access to bike share, um, really focused on low income minority and youth populations. Um, so Lift Up, formerly known as Bike Share for Youth, is a program where Lift gives away free memberships to youth ages 16 to 20. Um, it's also in partnership with the YMCA. Um, we collaborate with you know, several community-based organizations, provide them with partner keys and free ride codes, um, allowing, to, allowing them to expand their um, programs and education. And then Prescribe a Bike is another example of where doctors actually prescribe city bike memberships to folks who need to incorporate a little bit more physical activity into their daily lives. Um, if you have questions about any of the other, um, any other things mentioned here, um, we'd happy, be happy to answer those in the Q&A. Um, so safe cycling, we promote it in a variety of ways. We have helmet, light, and bell giveaways, as well as just general safety awareness classes. In 2019, we announced the Great Green Wave Plan that really focuses on improving bike infrastructure. Um, and a lot of that area overlaps with bike share expansion. Um, it also includes expanded educational efforts as well. Um, so a little bit about um, COVID-19 and City Bikes response. Um, anytime bikes are brought back into the depot, um, they are cleaned at their high, high contact point. So think handlebars, basket seat, any place that you need to touch quite frequently. Um, anything that's adjacent to a high use medical facility are cleaned when they're docked. Um, and then also they've incorporated social distancing practices um, into field and operation works as well. Um, so critical, uh, the critical workforce membership program um, started when COVID happened um, to provide memberships, free memberships to essential workers. Um, there's about 20,000 that were given away enrollment for that program has ended, but this was something that was really important um, during the you know, first, first few months of the, the pandemic, just to make sure that folks, especially essential workers, were getting where they needed to go in a socially distant way. Um, so just a little bit about our planning and outreach process. Um, so really the foundation of the system is based on this you know, high density um, you know, station number of stations across um, the service area. So when you're in the service area, you really wanna be just about a three to five minute walk um, from any station once you're inside the service area. Um, we do have you know, larger stations at more like major destinations. So think transit hubs or um, like the Barclays Center, for example. Um, and there's a lot of considerations for site specific locations. Um, so think you know, proximity to hydrants, utilities, as well as ADA factors. Um, and those are just a few of the things that we consider um, when, when deciding station placement. 
Um, so public outreach has been significantly modified since the pandemic started. Um, so most of everything has been, um, you know, channeled through a online uh, format. And so we launched an uh, interactive station planning map and feedback portal. Um, as you can see in the lower photo, we saw a tremendous response, about 900 comments um, were submitted um, for community board 7, 10, 12, and 14, um, as well as hosting um, you know, a town hall later this week as well in coordination with Lyft. Um, and then we're gonna continue ongoing stakeholder meetings um, with you know, folks like Greenwood Cemetery and um, Industry City um, organizations like that. Um, so a little bit about how we actually create the plan. Um, we take that feedback data, we take lift operational considerations, um, and we sort of combine them to create a map that kind of really guides um, the draft plan. And so the darker shades on this map you're going to see and indicates greater preference. And the larger the circle is the sort of the more vocal people have been in those particular areas. And so where possible, we try to eliminate spaces where people say, um, that they don't want or don't think it's a good idea for um, sites or stations to be. Um, so this is just a little bit of a closer in-depth look. As you can see, we have a lot of like the corridors have a lot of um, feedback um, and a lot of like prime um, destination points as well. Um, so a little bit about the draft plan. We're going to go into more detail on this later. This is just um, here. Um, we, you know, as I said, we really use um, that feedback map as sort of our guide. Um, and then as well as like network considerations, um, technical criteria to create this draft plan. Um, next steps are to gather additional feedback, um, comments based on you know, this draft plan, additional technical screening, um, and then site-specific outreach. So any property that will have a new station um, is gonna get um, a knock on their door or you know, an email or a call. Um, it, we, we don't want these to just show up by surprise to adjacent property owners. Um, once we install the stations, um, there'll be a continued dialogue um, and monitoring um, and adjusting if needed. Um, so now we're gonna go into the draft plan review. Um, tomorrow morning, this will be posted to our website. Um, it's nyc.gov backslash bike share. You can navigate to um, the maps and plan tab, and then underneath there you'll see borough and then community board. Um, but I think I'll, I'll send a link to Emily and she can send it to all of you guys. Um, and so just a couple of things about the map. We're gonna start in the Eastern section, work our way west and then head south. Um, and just to kind of give you guys a little bit of guidance, um, triangles here mean sidewalk stations um, and squares represent roadbed stations. And the letters inside of them um, represent um, what side of the street they're on. So for example, this is a sidewalk station on the south side of Fort Hamilton Parkway, just um, west of East 2nd Street. Um, and so these, I'm not gonna go site by site. Um, I'm just gonna kind of let you guys see, but just note, um, in this particular slide, I believe there are 21 stations proposed. 10 of those are in Community Board 7. Um, one of them is still in coordination with DPR, um, 8 and 12, and then 3 and 14. Um, anything that you're going to see along the verge of Greenwood Cemetery, we did um, already speak with them. Um, so none of those sites um, do have any operational conflicts. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it a few moments on this slide and then I'm going to run to the next slide. We have about four of these um, and then once we completed we can kind of come back um, and I can answer any questions that you might have about a particular location. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, and so this one's all in Community Board 7. Um, there are a total of 19 stations proposed for this area. Again, all of the ones on the verge of um, Greenwood Cemetery have been coordinated um, and the triangle sidewalk um, squares are roadbed. And one, one station is being coordinated with DPR, if I didn't mention that. I'm going to move to the next slide. 
Um, all of the slides in here are also in uh, Community Board 7. There are 25 stations proposed um, in this slide. Um, three are in coordination with Industry City, um, and then one in, with DPR uh, for Sunset Park. You'll see that in the lower um, right-hand section of the map. And then just as a reminder, squares, roadbed, triangle, sidewalk. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the final slide. Um, there are 28 stations proposed um, in this slide here. Um, about seven of those are in community board 10. Um, there is one that is still being coordinated with Brooklyn Army Terminal. Um, and we're also speaking with EDC as well um, about um, an additional potential uh, ferry location as well. Um, once, I mean, once you guys are ready to um, start asking questions, we're happy to answer. If you want me to go back to any of the previous slides, um, I'm happy to do that. Um, but that is the, this is the end of my presentation for the draft plan. Okay, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, we have been feeling <clears throat> deserving of City Bike for a long time in this, uh, in this district, since we've been housing their storage and their facilities, so we are glad to see this happening. Uh, Jeremy, if uh, I would, I would, if there are people who have their hands up, I would, I would, you can go ahead and call on them. So I can't see that screen while we are viewing Lisa's screen. So Lisa, if you would stop sharing for the moment. Sure. Thank you. Um, I have Victor Swinton with his hand up first. Folks, uh, <laughs> speaking right now, I ask that you just mute yourselves. All right, thank you. Just, um, I, I just, if I could get the numbers, the numbers again, if you have them for the ro the road beds and the sidewalks, and also, do you know the impact uh, these stations will have on parking in the neighborhood? Sure. Um, so the majority of the stations uh, are going to be in the roadbed. Um, I can, you know, share with you guys, uh, Emily, with some numbers about like which are sidewalk um, and which are roadbed. Um, you know, not all of the roadbed locations that you see in, in this board are actually taking um, parking um, where we could, we, you know, utilized what we call daylighting. So at intersections where you see maybe no standing um, to make sure that there's clear line sites um, for folks crossing the street. Um, we try to utilize that space as well. Um, there's also maybe some areas that might be um, truffled or like pedestrianized space um, adjacent to the sidewalk. Um, so where we could, we tried to have roadbed locations that didn't take parking, um, but this obviously will have an impact on, you know, it will eliminate some parking spaces throughout the community. Um, that's just sort of a, a trade-off of bringing City Bike into a community, um, but we're happy to discuss any particular location um, if you have any questions about it. I have Julio Pena's hand up next. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I'm wondering, uh, well, one, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm wondering if you can speak to, and part of my question was already answered by Victor's, if you can speak a little bit to uh, the rationale as to the, um, the siding, not so much the siding of the locations as to like, when you figure out a location, whether it is going to be a roadbed or a sidewalk, um, and I guess the second uh, part of the question is, um, uh, no, I'm just gonna leave it to that first part. Thank you. Sure, thanks for that question. Um, you know, CB7 in particular was um, challenging with sidewalk spaces. We have a minimum width, um, which is about 15 feet. Um, to place a station um, in, and, and that doesn't, just because a sidewalk maybe is 15 feet, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's what we de deem as viable. 
um, for a station um, to be placed there. So think if there's um, you like tree pits, the proximity of tree pits to one another, there needs to be a specific distance <coughs> Um, for us to be able to place the station. Um, if there's a, a fire hydrant, if there are utilities in the roadbed, so think gas lines or manholes, we can't place a station on top of those. So a lot of times, even if a sidewalk is per se like wide enough, um, there might be other factors um, that go into why it wouldn't be able to be placed there. Um, and so generally how we we selected sites um, is we really use that feedback map as our base. Um, and we also had people, you know, we had um, a team of people go out into the field. We walked every single street um, in this community board and deemed and basically selected from what we called our technically viable spaces, um, took that, overlaid it with that feedback map, um, and then selected sites um, that way. Um, but I'll say in CB7 specifically, um, sidewalk sites were, sidewalks were very narrow, um, generally. Thank you, Julio. Let me just explain for members of the public, please also use the raise your hand function. Um, right now, this first round of, of questions and, and uh, comments goes to our board members, but you will all be uh, able to speak during the second round. So please use the raise hand function. I see Cindy Vandenbosch and uh, Cynthia Felix have uh, joined us and I will be, and Catherine Walsh, I will be noting their attendance. Karen Rolnick, you are next. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I have two questions. One is, um, are there any city bike terminals going to be planned for the ferry station at Brooklyn Army? And then I have a second question after that. Um, so yes, that's something that we, you know, I mentioned in that last slide, um, there is one location still being coordinated with Brooklyn Army, Army Terminal, and we're also trying to work with EDC as well to see how close we can get um, a station. We already have one that's very close, um, but we're working with them to see um, what we can do, um, but just because it's um, not necessarily like a city property, so it's not a property, so we have to coordinate a little bit more in depth um, for okay. locations. You will not be displacing uh, parking for non-city bike bicyclists, will you? No, this any any parking take that we we do here is going to be specifically for city bike stations um, that are in the roadbed. Okay, and it and won't displace existing bicycle parking. It won't displace existing bicycle parking. No, um, we might complement it or relocate it, um, but we won't we won't eliminate it. Okay, and the other question is, could you talk a little bit about, um, we have an express subway station that I know is gonna be difficult to place because I was on that map. <laughs> and it, it's just, can you talk about what you're doing to put bicycles near the subway stations, especially the one on 36th Street, which is a major station and a lot of people use it? Yeah, no, that's a great question. We were, we're very conscious of making sure that we place stations in close proximity to um, subway entrances. Um, so when, when you go back um, and look at the draft plan, we actually have the subway entrances um, as blue little blue dots so that you can see how close they actually are. Um, the one on 36th Street, um, we, you know, we did a lot of extra siting in that area to really make sure that we had a station um, that was going to serve um, that because you're right, it's a huge hub um, and we want to make sure um, we have that complementary um, mode there. Um, so yeah, it's something we... So, so do you want like bicycles in the dozens scheduled for that corner or would it be more like the six or seven? <laughs> Um, so, so any station um, that goes down on the ground, we have a minimum of like 19 docks um, is, is, is what we're going to have. Um, and so that's, that's the minimum. We sort of maxed out the space we could at 36th Street. Um, and, you know, it's something, there's also, you know, another station nearby. So even if, let's say, that station can accommodate uh, a rider, you can always move over to a nearby. That's why having, you know, such a dense network uh, makes it such a reliable, like, you know, if one station is full, you can pop over to another one. Um, like, like there's a there's a bus terminal there, the Jackie Gleason, that's got a lot of space for, for that type okay. of thing. Yeah, if you, and also if you, like maybe there's something we didn't um, fully consider, um, you know, feel free to also like recommend additional spaces for us to take a second look. Um, we're always happy to um, 
incorporate additional feedback into these All plans. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Was Thank you, Karen. That's my opportunity to make a pitch for Bush Terminal Piers Park, which wasn't on the list. Um, and then Catherine Walsh, you are next. Great, thanks. I um, also just want to echo what Zach just said about um, being excited about the fact that we're going to have the connectivity with City Bike, um, knowing that City Bike has been located down at Industry City over the years. Um, I wanted to just raise, if it hasn't been mentioned yet, uh, around traffic safety and the loss of life that we've had on Third Avenue and um, the very real threat that we have, uh, again, with existing traffic patterns and safety on Third Avenue, but also around a lot of the last mile distribution hubs that are now coming to Sunset Park. And I hear what you're saying around looking at current availability and sites, but you know, we are desperate and need a proper traffic study to be done by DOT. We're so overdue. Um, and I know there's been, you know, discussions of this and I want to kind of understand if we want to be promoting, we're excited to have um, this investment in bike infrastructure, but what are we doing about the safety of our, of our neighbors here in the district? And, and I just like, it's going to be incredibly irresponsible and result in death. Um, and we have to just talk about what that actually looks like in, in promoting this, but at the same time, what real changes and steps and investments are gonna happen at the same time, because I'm just really afraid of, of the implications to be encouraging it, but not actually be addressing these other issues. Thank you for that. Um, and maybe Emily can speak a little bit more about Third Avenue um, in particular, but um, what I will say is if you take a second look at the plan, you'll notice that along the 4th and 5th Avenue corridors where there is infrastructure, we've really made sure to try to populate that um, and make sure that there's a lot of complementary stations there, whereas with Third Avenue, you don't see as many stations um, that are um, you know, adjacent to it, one, because it's, it's, we need solar. Um, to be able to power the stations, but two, it's also not, obviously, like, you know, it's not a great place to bike. Um, so it's, you know, that's something that we were conscious of when building out the network to really um, foster um, the existing infrastructure and complement the existing infrastructure rather than, you know, taking folks to places um, that might not be suitable um, for riding. Yeah, so um, just to add on to that, um, you know, I helped uh, the bike share unit, you know, site some of these locations and I made it a point to um, keep the docks off 3rd Avenue because I understand uh, the safety concerns that um, we all have regarding that uh, sh avenue. And so until we get the proper infrastructure to, you know, support, um, you know, city bikes on 3rd Avenue, then uh, that's something that we'll look into at a later time. But as of right now, we, we don't have an answer for that. Do for we expect when we would get a proper traffic study being done by DOT for Third Avenue? Um, there have been conversations, but there's nothing definite um, that I can give you right now. But we are, we are aware of um, the safety issues and concerns on Third Avenue, and we share the sentiment also. And did you take into account the increase of the last mile distribution centers that are being uh, as of right developed in the neighborhood as you're thinking about these considerations for siting? Um, yes, so I, I have the knowledge of that. And so I helped um, the, when siting these locations, um, you know, to make them the safest locations possible to, to have city bike there. Okay, I, I just have a, I just I know other board members want to ask questions, but I have serious concerns that we don't have a traffic study done and we're talking about increasing the amount of bike infrastructure. We want to do that, but but we're still in the same situation that we've been in um, and this hasn't been addressed by DOT. I understand. Um, and that's something that we can talk about at uh, a later point in time when I have more information to give you. Thank you, Katie. Uh, just a reminder to members of the public, please raise your hand. We will get to you. Everybody will have their opportunity to speak. Um, I want to just announce Sam Sierra, Gladys Bruno, and Jimmy Lee. I've noted all of your attendance as well. Pat Ruiz, you're next. 
Hi, um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I didn't really get a good look at your slides, vision, laptop, very small. Um, I know that there are city bike stations at a distant city. You say you're talking to um, EDC, Brooklyn Army Terminal. That's great. Um, what about over by the hospital for the staff there? Has that been considered as a potential location? even if it's Second Avenue or First Avenue? Yeah, the closest station is gonna be Second at 55th. It's gonna be on the sidewalk um, near the park there. Um, but we did um, have direct contact with um, NYU. Um, and so we coordinated with them. They kind of gave us, um, they also had some concerns about vehicular access and emergency vehicles, et cetera. So we really tried to make sure that we kept that space clean or clear for them. Um, and so we're, we had the station um, placed on the sidewalk sort of nestled um, against the fence line there. So um, yes, that was considered. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Committee member, John DeLuper. Hey, uh, I also wanna echo what others have said that it's great to see that this is coming to our neighborhood, very exciting. But I do have a, a couple follow-up questions. So first, I'm a little surprised to see that so many stations were sited on the sidewalk. When I've seen city bike in other neighborhoods, a lot of times I see them at the corner and they do uh, what you call uh, daylighting, which makes it much safer for the pedestrians. Um, I don't know if there's any way you can take the feedback back, but I think anywhere that a side, that's currently a sidewalk location that could be used for daylighting would greatly improve the safety. Um, I'm thinking especially I noticed by uh, 65th Street, you had a sidewalk station and that's an area where um, it's already very tricky uh, as a pedestrian. So definitely um, if, if you could take that back and uh, see, see if sidewalk stations could be converted into, into daylighting uh, stations. And then the other, oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go. Okay, I was just going to say that, you know, we, we I totally agree. The majority of sites in CB7 are um, on the sidewalk uh, or in the roadbed, I should say. Um, I think, you know, less than maybe about 20 or so are going to be on the sidewalk um, out of like maybe about 93 stations. So the bulk um, are really in the roadbed. Um, and then the ones along 65th Street were, of course, well, we were happy to take a second look at that. Um, but that's sort of that one little park, um, Leif Erickson. Um, and so we had some nice sites there. Um, okay. And it's not in um, community board seven. So there were other factors that kind of went into um, why that was selected there. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. You still, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. And the, the other question was, um, I'm a little, or do we have a number of how many of these are going to be regular city bikes versus the pedal assist city bikes? Um, so we don't, so essentially when bikes go out into, um, out into the system, they sort of float wherever they're going to go, wherever riders take them. Um, but if you kind of look at the city bike map now, um, there are, you know, the Bronx is a place we just expanded to recently. Um, and anywhere in the system, you'll see that there's a very like widespread of where our e-bikes are. Um, so we're seeing that ridership is, you know, it's not just like in one area where all of the e-bikes are sort of um, um, located. Um, so we're seeing a, a pretty good um, distribution of those, um, which is really nice to see, um, but we can't um, predict exactly where they're going to go. We can help with rebalancing efforts, um, you know, once, if we see that there's like patterns, um, if there's not enough e-bikes, that's certainly something that we can, you know, discuss with Lyft and have them pay some closer attention to. But um, usually once, once bikes go out, um, they go wherever they're going to go. Thank you. And, and currently, what, what is the percentage of e-bikes that are in the fleet? Um, that's a good question. I want to say, Lily, do you have that number? Yeah, so um, I don't know the, the number off the top of my head. Um, I know that eventually the goal is to get about 20% of the fleet to be e-bikes. Um, but I think we're probably still a ways from that. And But as um, we, we expand, we introduce new bikes and about 20% of that, let's say, will be e-bikes. So the, the majority of bikes will still be regular pedal bikes. Um, e-bikes are much more expensive to, to operate. Um, and so we want to make sure that there's, there's a good balance um, for, for all users. 
And the second rollout, you guys have eliminated the problems that were with the first rollout. You've seen less uh, with the going over the handlebars and that stuff has been, so it's been, yes. it's been a success, you would say? Yes. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar, um, City Bike initially introduced pedal assist e-bikes and these are, you know, they're pedal assist. So you still have to pedal. It's not a throttle bike. Um, and um, they originally introduced them, um, I, I think in, in early 2019, there were some issues um, with the mechanics. Um, and then once those were discovered, all the e-bikes were pulled and City Bike kind of went back to the drawing board, um, figuring out how to make essentially all the pieces fit and on the bike and including the, the pedal assist um, motor. Um, and so they reintroduced a, a, a completely different version of the e-bike um, this past winter um, and uh, started pretty small, like only a couple hundred e-bikes e out. And then as we were evaluating and seeing that there weren't, we weren't experiencing the same issues um, and the bikes were being really well utilized, they've been able to introduce more of those bikes. Thank you. Uh, right. So, so Jeremy, right. yes. are there more uh, board members or are we onto the public? I have two more board members and it'll be on to the public. Okay. David Estrada, you're next. Whatever you're having for dinner, I hope you brought enough for everybody. All right, guys. Also, if you get some loud background with my five-year-old screaming, I will, I will mute myself. Um, I want to make a pitch for something that was mentioned a little bit earlier about connectivity to Bush Terminal Park, both at the 43rd and the 51st Street entrances, uh, which are likely to receive some significant enhancements because of the Steiner Studio uh, um, project that's been announced for down there and the Made in New York campus. So a lot of work went into defining those upland connectors for cycling infrastructure and we anticipate arrival of the Brooklyn Greenway. So I just, and there's also some bus terminus turnaround points at the foot of 39th Street. Um, so I just think we might have more opportunities in the industrial zone west of 3rd Avenue where density seems like it should be lighter, but in fact in the next five to 10 years will be causing a lot more people to be coming and going both for work and, and recreation. Um, so just a plug for that. Um, we don't have NYCHA properties in Sunset Park, but we have a tremendous volume of low income households that receive Section 8 vouchers and other sorts of federally subsidized housing. And I would be happy to see any opportunity that City Bike could have to expand their equity initiatives to people who don't fall into some of the prescribed categories that have existed in other neighborhoods. Um, I manage the bid, for the business improvement district for Fifth Avenue. So we're very, very dense traffic wise, very narrow sidewalks. Um, noises about loss of parking. I lived through this in CP6. I saw grown men inside the police precinct point fingers into each other's chests and screaming. And then, you know, three years go by and everybody's used to it and it's fine. But I think we should anticipate uh, a spirited discussion about parking. Uh, and I'd just like to make a plug for a reality check about placement on street um, in in the- I think you're on mute. Um... Sorry, that happened. Um, there's lots of places west of Third, Fifth Avenue in the 20s and 30s where um, it's not an official truck route. People believe trucks don't go there and you've got 55 foot trucks turning on to, you know, little 25th Street off of an avenue. So I think we saw this in Red Hook. I think that's an object lesson in adjusting the exact placement of on-street stations. Sometimes it's a little adjustment that lets the, the illegal turn for the illegal truck happen as it does every day. Um, so I wanted to ask, that, that I won't ramble, but I wanted to ask a specific question for people here to, to understand after these stations are placed, what is the process for community members near a station to re-engage DOT and City Bike if they seek an adjustment to the exact placement of a, of a station? Um, that's a great question. Um, so I think the best way to do that is through the Borough Commissioner's Office, um, just so that we have uh, multiple parties uh, involved. Um, and so I would recommend that, um, you know, any person, you know, do that. We also, you know, Lyft has a 1-800 number, let's say it's something that needs to happen, like right away, if there's, you know, broken glass, or there's some issue with the station, there's a number on 
the actual kiosk that you can call. Um, and that's 24, that hotline is like 24 seven. Um, but again, like DOT is always available. You can go through like email 311 channels if it's something a little less serious um, that just needs to sort of be remedied. But again, I would, you know, you have direct contact to the borough commissioner's office. So I would recommend um, you choosing that avenue. Um, and again, I would, you know, reiterate, like those are all very great points about, you know, sort of the expanded use um, you know, in the coming future, in the next few years. Um, and as you know, we have infill projects going on in other parts of the city. So we anticipate this um, happening here um, in Sunset Park as things um, build out. Thank you so much. I have Cindy Vandenbosch next, and then we will go to the public. Hi, um, everybody can hear me, right? Okay, great, thanks. Um, so thank you so much for, for um, facilitating this process. And I myself have been a city bike user now for several years. It's been so helpful. And yet, you know, where I live, I can't actually use it, but um, I've used it in other parts of the city. Um, I just have two questions. One is kind of obvious, but um, I'm not sure that I heard you speak about this and I'm sorry if you did, um, but if you could just, um, David mentioned this as well, but um, have you been working with um, Brooklyn Greenway Initiative um, to ensure that the city bike stations will be aligned with the plan for the greenway um, in our neighborhood and in our district. Um, and then the other question I have, and this is maybe out of left field, but in terms of like bicycle repair, um, do you ever contract that out to small businesses or is that all in-house? And if you do contract it out to small businesses, I know there are small bicycle repair shops that we have in the district, um, but I'm guessing that you do that all in-house, but I figured I'd ask regardless. Um, both really good questions. Um, so Brooklyn Greenway, we haven't really started any discussions there, um, but mainly what I will say is that um, access to stations need to be 24 seven. And oftentimes we don't place stations like in parks specifically for that reason, because parks close at dusk. Um, so we can always, you know, as things are being developed, we can always engage the conversations and place things either like on the verge or, or wherever is, is suitable. Um, so we're happy to continue ongoing conversations and see where um, station placement might make the most sense um, on the verges of these new facilities as they're built out. Um, and then second, um, for mechanics, so the bikes have custom parts um, on most of them, so you need a specialized uh, mechanic. Um, so they do have a lot of their stuff in-house, which is right there in Sunset Park. Um, so a really great um, you know, job creator in your community, which is, is, is excellent. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that they um, contract out to smaller businesses, but it's something that I can ask again about, but I, I, I anticipate the answer is no. Thank you guys. Those are great questions from board members. I just also want to reiterate uh, the Bush Terminal Park. We really need to include that in our <clears throat> in our in our system. Uh, and Jeremy, I guess without further ado, we, have, uh, uh, we have a few right uh, members of the public who have their hands Please. raised. Um, yep. One of them I see put his hand down, and I'm assuming his question was answered. But folks, you can still raise your hands, and we're more than happy to call on you. Darren Goldner, you are the first, uh, and come on down. You can unmute yourself. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, so thanks again for the presentation. Uh, and you mentioned the terms uh, technical viability or something feasibility in terms of assessing placement. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about what you mean by that? Um, and then as a corollary to that, is that current technical uh, viability or viability once you consider any short-term non-capital changes to the street infrastructure, including the installation itself and what it may do. And then separately, you mentioned that place, uh, placements uh, to aid in daylighting. Were there any other uh, traffic calming safety improvements that could have been targeted, such as uh, in, our, in our community board, we have a lot of unprotected bike lanes, like for example, 4th Avenue, uh, that has uh, paint and plastic, but not necessarily physical protection. Uh, were, uh, were dock protected lanes considered as well? Thank you. Thanks, all really great questions. So um, some of the technical like criteria, um, I, didn't, I, I mentioned it a little bit, but a, a lot of the things that hinder um, station placement are gonna be utilities like in the ground. Um, so a lot of times, so 
gas utilities or manholes, things that like people don't really think about um, and that are not, um, you know, overly visible, um, really prohibit uh, us from like placing stations um, in certain locations. Um, so that's like one of the biggest drivers, um, but also just sort of like if it's a sidewalk location, you know, obviously um, widths of sidewalks, if it's in a road bed, um, you know, even on streets that have like two-way traffic and let's say parking on both sides of the street, there are then minimum widths um, from which we can install in a particular parking lane. So there's many technical reasons um, why either one side of the street or, um, you know, one avenue versus another is, is not viable. Um, and, you know, we can, you know, potentially go into it a little bit like site by site, but um, again, it's just so site specific, um, you know, how if it's technically viable or not. Um, and there's just so many variables. And then again, you know, um, hydrants um, or any other utility access point um, as well as is one of the major um, limiting factors for station placement. Um, and then just also in terms of like complementary, you know, complementing stations on, on Fourth Avenue, unfortunately, we really weren't able to put much, um, many stations on Fourth Avenue itself. Um, simply because of a sanitation requirement. Um, so if you notice along the corridor, um, we need an 11 foot clearance for sanitation vehicles to go through. And in the part, just there's, there's not enough room for the station and the bike lane and the sanitation crew to go through. So unfortunately we weren't able to um, add on, but I agree, I love putting stations in sort of what we call our floating parking lanes that are you know, not adjacent to the, to the bike lane to provide a little bit of more protection. Um, for cyclists there. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to utilize that um, along 4th Avenue, but other corridors, um, like you see in other corridors around the city. Um, and then I am, I think the third question I cannot remember, and I apologize. Uh, just if there were um, any other short um, non-capital improvements or changes that could be made uh, to facilitate insulation. Thank you. Um, and so I, you know, and what I will say to, to that last point, just about like, um, safety improvements, we see that when we do roll out city bike, it, it, it generally is, um, it improves safety for all road users. Um, so we see that um, there are, um, it's a higher, how do I phrase this? Um, so there, um, the rate of like folks that are, you know, either significantly injured or killed, um, it decreases faster. Um, in communities with city bike um, than other communities that don't have this. Um, you see that if there's more people in the road, um, traffic generally, it just generally tends to be traffic calming um, in its own right. So um, just the additional infrastructure will sort of help slow things down um, and make things a little bit safer. And I don't know, Lily, if you wanted to add anything there. Um, sure, I'll, I'll just say also that, you know, um, as Lisa mentioned in the presentation, that the stations aren't hard hardwired into into the ground. So let's say we put um, a station down, um, and the bike group wants to come in and um, work with you and put in a protected bike lane. Um, we we do have the ability to shift things around um, to accommodate future um, temporary or capital improvements. Yeah. Okay, we are uh, for public questions. I have a question that was uh, written by uh, Nathaniel Bochelis. Uh Folks, I am a, a notorious name butcher, but uh, Daniel's question is, what's the earliest the city bike stations can realistically be expected to be installed? Uh, great question. Um, so we're anticipating, you know, either, you know, mid, late winter, early, early spring um, for rollout in 2021. Um, so soon. It's exciting. So just a few months. Yeah, just a Gerald, few months. Thank you. Gerald Mulvaney. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Um, I live in Windsor Terrace and I'm near Prospect Park and I see the two green circles that you uh, earmarked for I, uh, Machete Square um, uh, Park Circle. Uh, what exactly do those, what, what do they mean? Is that the entrance to the park similar to what's at Bartell Pritchard Square where that station is now? And the same circle, it seems to exist around 16th Street and Prospect Park Southwest. Can you explain that for me? 
Sure. Um, so essentially what, what those circles are, are, are signifying is that we want to place the station there, but a little bit more coordination is needing to make sure that we're not, um, you know, if there's, you know, some sort of uh, operational consideration that we don't uh, understand or know about for DPR. Um, there's also a PD um, space there. There's also, I think, some additional projects that are kind of in the works um, in those locations. So they just require a little bit more uh, coordination on specific placement. Um, so in it, that's basically saying a station is coming here, but we don't know exactly where yet. I see. And also there's in between those two entrances, there is, seems to be a station maybe earmarked for uh, near Vanderbilt Street on Southwest. Mm -hmm. Now I know there's a bus stop right there. And is that on the sidewalk or is that on the roadway? That one's in the roadway um, and it's just after the, um, the bus stop. So we don't place stations um, in, in bus stops, um, but we will, we can have like a slight buffer um, to a bus stop. I see. So that basically you're going to take away parking from. Yeah. Now, I know there's a lot of different locations in Windsor Terrace that seem would accommodate uh, stations that wouldn't be taking spaces away and or be in front of residences. I, I don't know how closely you looked at those uh, Sealy Street Bridge, uh, Greenwood Avenue and Prospect Avenue by the train station. Uh, East 5th Street by the playground. Uh, there's a lot of different spots and I didn't see the map. Uh, uh, I didn't look at it so closely because, but it'll be available tomorrow on your website. It will be available tomorrow and we're happy to take, um, you know, additional feedback or comments um, if you have any, any additional okay. um, feedback for those locations as well. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jerry. I have Miles Davis next. Miles, you could unmute yourself now. Okay, Jeremy, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, Jer uh, again, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you for also considering what what Luther has submitted. I'm also going to ask if it would be possible to reconsider the location on 55th Street and 2nd Avenue by the park. Uh, we had put that on our list to be considered not to have a location there because we were concerned with safety as you are. And we're just concerned with the amount of increased activity any place on 2nd Avenue between 55th and 56th Street. Uh, the amount of traffic, the amount of activity, whether it's commercial or whether it's the hospital, is enormous, uh, including 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 thousands of ambulances coming every year to the emergency room on that block. Uh, thank you, Miles, um, for that comment. And yes, we did we did receive some um, feedback about concerns about that area. Um, and I'll kind of reiterate the the sidewalk. I mean, the site is on the sidewalk there. Um, so we understood that there was a lot of um, you know different uses for the roadway. We also had safety concerns about ambulances accessing. Um, so that's why that station was placed on the sidewalk. Um, but we really wanted to make sure that we also allowed and accommodated for access um, to these medical facilities um, nearby. Um, and we'll also, you know, continue to work with NYU um, if folks, you know, if, if there are some concerns or operational things that arise um, post-installation, um, we're happy to like work with um, any organization or folks as they see. Would it be possible to have further discussion? Yeah, um, we I think we're in coordination with NYU right now. Um, so they are still reviewing the station, and if they, you know, have some serious concerns, or you know, we can relocate it to a, a place that might make a little bit more sense. Um, we're certainly open to that. Um, so I, I guess I should also reiterate, you know, once this draft plan is released, we'll release, um, you know, sort of what we call our updated plan um, to show any type of shifts um, that have happened um, before stations actually do go down. Um, so over this next month, we'll be collecting, um, you know, feedback um, and coordinating a little bit more in-depthly with um, stakeholders um, to sort of minimize any um, operational issues that might arise for, from an installation. I, I probably did not introduce myself uh, uh, adequately, but I am with NYU. 
Okay, great. Um, I mean, we, we're happy to take um, your information down too, but I know that we've been um, provided contacts um, via uh, via our um, borough commissioner's office. So we've um, we've been coordinating with them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Please feel free to give me a call tomorrow. Sylvia Aquafreda. Sylvia, you could unmute yourself. Okay. My question is Fort Hamilton Parkway is becoming a projected bike lane. Is there any way not to put these city bikes where we're losing parking? on Fort Hamilton Parkway? Uh, that's a great question. So we are working with a bike group right now um, on where exactly to place locations along Fort Hamilton. So those discussions are happening right now um, so that it's possible that st stations um, you know, in that area might shift over to Fort Hamilton. So that's, that's a very real possibility, um, but we're still in sort of the... Um, so how will we know when... So uh, as I, as I just... So as I just mentioned that we'll, we'll release a second version of this plan um, prior uh, to stations going down. Um, so if there's any shifts um, that'll show in this next um, map um, and we'll be sure to share that with the community board, um, you know, and we can publicly announce um, that as well. Will we be informed of the new version through the community board? Um, yeah, I mean, we will sh we'll definitely share it with the community board and we can request, you know, that the community board share it with folks either that are here or um, their listservs. Okay, we'll thank you. We'll send out a mass email and put it on our social media as well. Um, I have uh, a question from Mike Ayakavella. Sorry for butchering your name. Um, how have we considered truck routes such as 20th Street and siding decisions? Two-way tra uh, two traffic is a considerable risk to cyclists. I noticed at least two stations abutting 20th near 6th and 7th Avenues. Appreciate the increased access this brings as a local resident. However, I'm concerned about encouraging up or downhill traffic in this corridor. Uh, thanks. Um, I also was reading that question just a minute ago. Um, but this, you know, as as I mentioned before, you know, stations that are, in, are at our at particular intersections also do, you know, increased daylighting, et cetera. So it improves safety safety at those corners. Um, I can't, you know, off the top of my head, um, there are 93 stations off the top of my head. Remember exactly where, um, you know, maybe along 20th Street there might be a few. But we'll certainly um, we can revisit those and take a second look um, based on this uh, feedback here. Thank you. Um, I have Catherine Walsh next. Yeah, I just I wanted to um, go back to the point that Miles Davis just raised from NYU about the location on 55th um, below second and just go back to this point earlier. So, you know, um, Clara Kang was one of the individuals who was killed. Um, she worked at NYU Langone and she was crossing Third Avenue. And we just I, I really I, I can't. Uh, imagine us doing any sort of rapid investment um, and expansion of city bike without the city taking account and responsibility of safety on Third Avenue. It, you know, kind of talking about like, we'll pick it up, we'll, we'll go through this again. We can't even fathom this possibility, right? So if we're talking about being able to have connections and the ability, you know, to service the workers that are at NYU that are going back and forth, well, then what are we doing for connectivity and safety? And I'm not hearing that being taken into account. I'm also not hearing really, you know, this consideration of these massive last mile distribution centers that are about to open and what's going to happen. It's, you know, just saying that we're not putting something on second, on third, where we are putting, you know, some sites on second and third is not really answering the question. And so, I, I just haven't heard anything in the presentation today to actually think about safety and consideration um, besides just, you know, putting some locations out there that's not actually doing anything. Yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, if Emily, yeah, you want to jump in. Um, but yeah, again, like, you know, when we place stations, obviously safety is something that you know, we do consider we work with other units um, in our agency um, as they're, you know, working on different projects um, in this area. But to speak specifically about, 
you know, what is happening um, along Third Avenue is not, I don't, I don't know exactly what's happening. there. Well, not just on Third, right, but crossing Third on Fourth, I mean, you've had other neighbors mm -hmm. who've talked about this today, um, but like, right, it's, it, it's not enough just to say, here are the siding locations, this is what we're doing, we're putting it, you know, in a parking spot or putting it on the sidewalk, but what other investments are being made, and I'm, I'm not, hearing any of that in any of this presentation um, and accept what's going to happen as an experiment with people's lives. Um, and we've already lost a ton of residents and neighbors in our community. Um, and again, with all these last mile trucking facilities and e-commerce, really concerned about what this looks like. So do you have, what are, what are your practical solutions in terms of picking that up? We've been asking for this traffic study that hasn't come through. Um, so you, you have a great question, Catherine. And um, who you're speaking to right now, both Lily and um, Lisa, they belong to the bike share unit and therefore their general scope of work is um, entirely focused on city bike and the bike share um, plan. Um, your question is better served to be answered um, in a different forum, not necessarily right here, um, where we have um, different units that are better able to answer your questions. I'll just add to that, you know, as, as Emily is mentioning, we are a very large bureaucracy. There's a good amount of siloing that happens naturally and our scope of work is focused on city bike and we try to incorporate our planning work with other units focused on safety planning and bike, sh bike lane planning and things like that. Um, and so I think, you know, we're happy to relay these concerns and try to, um, to work with those other groups and to have a better understanding of what those what plans are happening or what plans need to happen. Yeah, and this is a, a longer term conversation that I'm happy to, you know, continue with Jeremy um, over. Uh, you know, I bring it up every meeting. Yes, I, I know. Um, and, you know, there's no short term, there's no short term solution right now that we can offer you. Um. Okay, I mean, I'm focused on thinking about stewarding, you know, our responsibility as a community board and safety for our residents and what we've experienced. And so if there's going to be infrastructure, you know, changes and investments that are being made, what does that actually look like? And we're talking about people's lives on the line. And that's, I understand it's not part of your scope of work with um, talking about the bike team, but you know, it's our scope of work to be responsible for our community residents. And that's why we're asking these questions. So let's really make sure that this is a follow up because we, again, we can't make these investments for infrastructure, uh, city bike expen expansions without taking any of this into account. I, I, don't, I don't see how we're not talking about both of them at the same time, but yeah. I'll leave it, I'll leave it there. Yeah. So this is the last call for questions. Board members, attendees, please raise your hand uh, or put your question in the Q&A. Seeing nothing, Zach, I turn it back over to you. Um, well, I think that's a great, great place to uh, <clears throat> end because that's a very important point that Katie made. And <clears throat> as you guys know, that's, that's at the core of what we're trying to accomplish. In, in community board seven because we have some very serious safety issues. Uh, I would like to just ask the DOT what they want from us going forward. I, I don't imagine this needs a vote because this is being done, uh, doesn't, doesn't, not pending our approval, but we'll, we'll put it out for, for, the, for the community and the, and the board members to, for, for input, we'll share this, but is there anything else you guys would like from us specifically? Yeah, um, I think what would be really, great is if um, if you guys do have feedback um, to give it to us in writing um, in the next few weeks um, just right. so that we can incorporate it um, and and produce a, an additional map um, with those um, updates and Katie again I think if you wanted to like write your concerns um, so that it's like placed in a more formal formal setting and we can relay all of that information I think um, that would be the best way to communicate some of that um, those and concerns board, and board um, members and, then, and members of the public, if you'd like to share those with us as well, we can we could uh, incorporate that into our response. Yeah, 
Um, so something that is, you know, written would be really, really helpful. Um, that way we can kind of, you know, have, have a proper assessment and then be able to incorporate um, would be really um, helpful for us. Um, that's great. So we will invite everyone to, to write uh, as specifically or as general as they like about, about this program so you guys can have this all in writing. Um, echo what a lot of what we heard tonight. Um, thank you for your time. Appreciate this. Um, we are. I'm excited. This is. The, I'm, I'm reimagining how we get transport ourselves around New York City is a is a great thing, and City Bike has gone a long way to to helping that. Uh, and without any more questions, I. Uh, I see. I, I, I see one meeting. more hand up. Zach, thank you for triggering my Alexa device. You used its secret word. Uh, uh, That's your safe Jerry, word? <laughs> Jerry Mulvaney, uh, you can unmute yourself. Jerry? I just wanted to uh, get the, what was the, the website that where we can look at this uh, that'll be posted tomorrow? Could you repeat uh, Yeah, sure. It's nyc.gov backslash bike share. Um, and then on that website, you'll see a tab that has, it's called Maps and Plans, and it'll be located there under the appropriate borough and community board. Um, so this draft plan map will be posted to community boards 7, 10, 12, and 14 tomorrow. But if you want to look at the and, presentation, it'll just be for community board 7. And Jeremy, you'll post that, a link to that on our social media and, yep. and other, so, that's, will, so you guys can will, always find it there. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you all for your time. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Everyone have a, have a great night and get home safe if you're not home already. <laughs> Bye. Take care, everybody. Good night.